You know, most of you in the room probably understand this, but when you're talking about the Liberty Link variety, you're talking about getting resistance from uh, the, the BAR gene and the big difference between that and the white stripe being that the white stripe insect protection, uh, the PAT gene was used as a selectable marker when that was put into those plants. Uh, I think it's, it's fairly well understood or accepted that the PAT gene doesn't offer you the same level of tolerance as the BAR gene, but there is some tolerance there. And, you know, the first couple of years, we, you know, we started hearing about the ability to put Ignite on Wide Strike or Liberty on Wide Strike Cotton several, several years ago. It seemed kind of like it was kept hush hush for a while and nobody really wanted to talk about it. And then growers started doing that, asking us questions. So we kind of developed uh, a research project to look at that. So I don't think anybody is immune to the situation that's going on. Uh, you know, the way, the, the way these pigweeds have moved in, especially to West Tennessee, the North Delta, Mississippi, they're moving throughout the Delta, but they're particularly bad in the North Delta. Uh, they're still not too bad in our hill regions of Mississippi yet. Uh, we've been talking with those growers at length about this and to be preparing for this. Uh, I think, I hope they're getting that. But I don't think anybody would argue that these things aren't just changing the way we practice weed management. They're completely changing the way that we farm. Uh, not just cotton, but soybeans also. And you can even see that you know, when you start looking at varieties planted, some of these varieties planted reports and USDA releases. In my mind, you can see the trickle-down effects of these pigweed problems all the way down into this. And what I mean by that, uh, in the Mid-South, so that's Missouri, Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, the five states, you look at those, those states and the percent acres planted to a given variety in those states, uh, Phytogen 375 plant over 20% of the acres in those. West Tennessee is going to be 70, roughly. Um, there's no doubt 375 is a pretty solid variety, done pretty well for us, but I also don't think there's any question that a lot of those percent acres are getting planted that variety because you have the ability to put Ignite or Liberty over the top of it. I don't know that there's any question, particularly in West Tennessee, some of our Delta areas, I don't know that there's any question about that. So it raises several questions. You know, the historic questions with Liberty Link is then will they perform in the Mid-South? And, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, if I spray my white strike cotton with Liberty or Ignite, how much injury am I going to get out of it? And, and which technology works best in an Ignite system. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and give you a big research talk. It's almost impossible for me to do that anymore, being an extension the last five or six years. I do all, I want you all to understand the magnitude of the data that we, or the mag magnitude of work that we put into this data. So we've been doing this for a couple of years now. I've done it a couple of times each year. Mississippi, Chris has in Tennessee. Tom Barber, who's in the room, has in Arkansas. Uh, Georgia, Louisiana, the Carolinas, there's been a lot, a lot of work going into this stuff. So when I'm talking about some of this stuff, I kind of give you an idea of how much work has went into that. So essentially it's what we did uh, in terms of the first little bit of stuff I'm going to show you is we planted uh, five different uh, wide strikes and three Liberty Links. We sprayed those co that cotton at either one to three leaf and or seven to nine leaf with 29 ounces of Ignite. So it either got sprayed, uh, no, none at all with Liberty or Ignite or got sprayed twice at one to three leaf and a seven to nine. We basically came in, did some visual injury stuff, and we took a tremendous amount of data, looked at heights, looked at nodes, uh, looked at nodes above white flower, nodes above crack bowl yields, and we, my guys pretty much hate me for doing this work because they don't do anything but count. And I, I did find out, I got a couple of student workers working for me that can't count. I think, they're, I think they were at UT or UT Martin maybe, and just speculating. Uh, sorry guys, I hate to say that, but I think it's true. But uh, they struggle counting a little bit. But uh, regardless, so when I got this up here, you know, this is cotton injury, and this is on the varieties. So you can see the varieties we looked at, the 1735, Fiber Max, 4145, uh, a couple of the phytogens, 367, 375, uh, you know, 1773, 440, 499, and, and a couple of the full maturities, 1845 and the 565. I don't think there's, there's without a doubt, you know, there's a little bit more injury on the wide strikes with two applications at those timings compared to the Liberty Links. But you have to look at the scale of the graph on here, okay? I'm, I'm not trying to sell this to you. Uh, if I did, I would have stopped at a four and did in half, in half degree increments. But if you look at the scale of injury, less than 4% injury overall. If I got cotton that's got less than 4% injury, I'm pretty happy. I mean, I can get that from sandblast, and I can get it from thrips, I can get it from hail. A number of different things can give me 4% injury. If I see less than that, I'm in a pretty good mood. And that's on, that's uh, two weeks after that one to three leaf shot. You know, they always say a picture's worth a thousand words. These are some of Chris's pictures. Uh, there's what 29 ounces looks like, and I think that was about two weeks after that one to three leaf application. Uh, in my mind, what, what injury shows up on the phytogens looks like, almost looks like thrips damage to me. When I first saw mine, I went back and checked my seed treatments on my seed, looked at it, 
I thought maybe I had some, some thrift damage because of a seed treatment issue. Lo and behold, a lot of that, that out, outer edge curling and puckering and stuff looked a lot like thrift damage. Uh, long story short, in, in about a week it was gone. I couldn't even tell it was there. So go in there and look at that two weeks after the seven to nine leaf application. Again, there's a little bit more injury on the, on the wide strike cotton, but again, look at your scale of injury. It's 2% or less this time. Uh, so really very little injury on these on the varieties. I will say this was straight ignite. There was no ammonium sulfate with this. There was no dual with this, no anything. This was straight ignite by itself. So you look at final plant heights, you know, what does final plant height matter? You know, I don't care about that. I want to know what goes in the picker basket. Basically, when you look at plant height, that's more dictated by genetics than it was by application or rate or anything else. Uh, essentially, you know, the 499 and the 4145 and some others tend to be a little bit taller, which I think we probably knew already. Final notes follows essentially the same thing. Uh, the one thing early on when, when our growers were calling myself, Chris, Larry Steckel, Ken Smith, and others about this, you know, what about a delay in maturity when I do this? So we decided we'd go and count nodes of a crack bowl, which is, is a, always a fun process for my guys. But, uh, you know, essentially we saw no differences due to application in terms of nodes of a crack bowl when we looked at varieties. And so in my mind, I don't see a big delay in maturity from two shots at 29 ounces of this product. So what pays the yield, or what pays the bills is yield, right? So we look at this stuff. A uh, couple interesting things to point out here. I don't know if you got a laser pointer or not. I guess you do, right there. So we've kind of been seeing this, and this, kind of, this work right here kind of prompted some other work. But if you look at the 1735 and the 4145 right here, we're starting to see a little bit of a yield increase from putting two shots at 29 ounces on there. I will say the checks were true untreated checks. They were weed free. So I know in mine, I put cotton ran down behind the planter. My guys chopped and we run a food through and we kept them weed free. Uh, essentially, they had no herbicide over the top. So we're seeing a little bit of a yield increase from that. That's prompted some work that I'm not going to talk about today. We're actually doing some work looking at do you see a yield increase on Liberty Link cotton from putting Liberty over the top of it? The other thing, we do see a little bit of a yield decrease on 375. Now, having said that, do I believe that you're going to see a yield increase on fiber max every time you put Liberty over the top of Liberty and cotton? To the extent here today, no, I don't. Do I believe you're going to see a yield decrease on 375 every time you put Liberty over the top of it? Stand here today? No, I don't, because I got guys that do it every day and don't see any, and then I got guys that do it some days and they do see it. So it just kind of depends on a lot of factors, environment being one of them. Uh, in my mind, probably humidity <laughs> plays a big part in this, temperature, uh, what stress level that cotton's in. There are a lot of things that go into this that are very difficult to quantify. The other thing we did, you know, I think back to my dad when I look at this, because my dad's old rule of thumb was, if a little's good's a lot's better. And, you know, some of our guys kind of have that same mentality. Well, 29 ounces of the ignites, all right, what if, I, what if I up it to 36 or whatever else? You know, it's hard to look at a bunch, of, a bunch of incremental stuff like that. So we just did 29, 58, 87, and 116 ounces. So essentially, uh, we put those out once at one to three leaf or and or at seven to nine leaf cotton. Uh, basically, the number of applications didn't matter. We threw all that stuff together. Uh, as you would expect, uh, like before, we saw a little bit more injury on our wide stripe cotton. Uh, and as you would expect, when you start going a two, three, and four X rate, injury starts going up. And we, we were seeing 40, 50, 60% injury on some of the stuff where we put a gallon over the top of it. Now that's a gallon of product to the acre. That's way off label. Uh, nobody would ever do that, but we wanted to look at it just to compare what we actually had. Same thing, uh, after that later season application, seven to nine leaf, again, the, the scale is a little bit different here. We're 20-25% we're, we're injury with that gallon rate, but at 29 ounces, just like on the variety evaluation side of this, we're less than 5% injury. In terms of final heights, we did see a little bit of height reduction at some of those higher rates, which we didn't see in the varieties. Uh, and interestingly enough, I uh, didn't show it up here, but there were some node reductions. I will say in terms of nodes above crack bowl, as you increase your rates, 58, 87, 116 ounces, we did start seeing some delays in maturity. Uh, but again, those labels are way off rate. We basically did that to compare things. So when you look at lint yield, uh, you know, 1773 being in the black, 375 being in the red here at 29 ounces, uh, didn't see any difference compared to the untreated on either one of these. Uh, we just did start to see a little bit of a yield reduction at 58 ounces. So somewhere in there in between 29 and 58, there is somewhat of a breaking point on the 375 or, or the wide strikes, however you want to term that. I will say looking at this, I'm, I'm all but convinced that the Liberty links, you could about set the jug on them and the spill and you wouldn't get any injury from the Liberty on them. They seem to be very, very robust in terms of their tolerance. 
So we did see some visual injury on our white stripes. It didn't always show up and yield. Uh, it really seemed to be transient in my mind. So I'd see it two, three weeks later, the, the injury tended to disappear. I kind of equated to what Cobra used to look like on soybeans. I grew up in the state of Illinois, a lot of soybeans. Uh, my dad run a, run a terrigator for a living. They put Cobra on their soybeans until the farmer would go on vacation for two weeks because they'll bronze up the leaves and knock some of the leaves off. It, in my mind, it reminded me a lot of that. Did see a few differences in plant height, nodes, and nodes of a crackle, but those are primarily due to genetics, not necessarily to application. Uh, we did see some yield reduction in 375, but I'm not prepared to stand here telling you today that that's going to happen every time, just like I'm not prepared to tell you today that you're going to see a yield increase every time you put Liberty on, on white stripe, or on, uh, on Liberty <coughs> Lint Cotton, rather. So just, uh, I don't even know how much time I got, Chris, but, but, but uh, I guess in terms of where we're at with this, I don't think there's absolutely any question that Liberty Link varieties, 41, 45, 18, 45, 17, 73, I don't think there's any question about their level of tolerance to Liberty herbicide. In terms of where the white stripes are, I guess I put somewhat in quotes, quote unquote, somewhat reduced. Uh, I think you can probably break that tolerance or that, that level of, of tolerance if you really try to, but at 29 ounces, I don't see it hurting us. I know uh, I've been to grower meetings for the last two months, it seems like. In some cases, I have growers that will tell me it did hurt them. In some cases, I don't think it didn't hurt them. Usually, the ones that it did hurt have mixed dual with their Liberty. They have mixed ammonium sulfate with their Liberty. They're starting to put those applications out around bloom time. For whatever reason, when that plant starts shifting, carbohydrates around, starts to go reproductive. As bloom starts to set in, it seems like it becomes a little bit more susceptible to injury. But the one thing that I would tell you when you're considering what you're going to do for this year, in my mind, you're no longer just picking a variety. You're picking a whole package. So there's a lot of things in that package. They all cost money. That includes seed treatments, insecticide traits, herbicide traits, uh, the genetics of your yield. You're, you're picking the whole thing anymore. And with the weed control thing being the way it is, if, you know, if you've kept up with some of the things going on on the worm side of things, you know, it, it's up to you to pick a, a white stripe or a Liberty or a Bogar 2 or a Liberty Link or a Flex, but you're picking the entire package and you're stuck with that package the whole year. And what I've been telling my guys, uh, select a package you can be confident with, select a package that you know you can kill weeds with and you can pay the bills with. Whether, whether you decide you want to go with a white stripe and put Liberty on it or you want to plant a true Liberty Link, uh, I would just suggest you, you pick the one that you know you can kill your weeds with and the one that you know you can pay the bills with. So to answer the questions from earlier, and I, I got to give Chris credit here. These are actually Chris's questions. Uh, he and I kind of talked back and forth. Will Liberty Link varieties perform in the Mid South? I think, yeah. When you look at what 4145 has done, uh, last year I had in some on-farm trials. Last year yielded very well. Uh, 1944, the the uh, the uh, Glytol Liberty Link that's coming out, the new one this year, it yielded very well for me. So I think they will perform in the Mid South. Uh, so you you know you, there are some good genetics out there. How much injury am I going to get from putting white stripe or Liberty or Ignite on my white stripe cotton? I think that all depends whether what you do with it. If you go straight 29 ounces by itself, I don't think you're going to see a tremendous amount. You start mixing ammonium sulfate with it, you start putting dual with it, you start putting it out at bloom or after bloom, I think your chances of injury go up dramatically. And which technology will perform best? I think that's both. I think it depends on how you manage it. It depends on how you want to do things and what additives you want to put with it. With that, uh, I'll take any questions if y'all have them. If not, I certainly appreciate y'all being here. Appreciate y'all listening to me. What about mixing Roundup with your, with your uh, Ignite? The question was about mixing Roundup with Ignite. I guess the Ken Smith is a lot smarter than me. I don't know if he's still here, but I guess my first thought on that would be from a weed control standpoint, I, I think you're probably going to see some issues with that primarily because I suspect your Liberty is going to work quick enough on that plant that your Roundup's not going to get distributed through that plant to do what it should do. So I, I expect you're probably going to see some antagonism on that. I know years ago we looked at mixing some of the graminicides and your fusillades and fusions and selects and all that with Liberty or Ignite at the time. And when you do that, you really see your grass control go down simply because it limits the amount of movement through that plant how it needs to work. 